Hi there, Lloyd Mesquita, speaking to you from LloydMesquita.com, who's Lloyd Mesquita and Think Personal Branding. Um, I got um, quite a number of emails, so I just took the main information and I've, uh, I'm going to share with you whatever I do know, uh, that is from the uh, UAE market, the Dubai market. Um, and um, towards the end, I'll be answering, say, in and around nine questions that I received. Um, the thing is, I get quite a number of questions and I don't like to repeat, uh, you, you know, keep answering all of them because I received through WhatsApp, through emails, through so many other things. So uh, in this video, first is going to be the headlines, then it's going to be the Q&A. All right. Um, before I do begin, I would like to say a big thank you to three people who uh, send me donations. They have been sending me donations every week. Uh, it's not been a very big amount, but they've been sending me donations of three dollars, five dollars, ten dollars. I really appreciate. There has been one very generous donor from uh, Canada. He is very rich, and he has been sending me every month. I really appreciate and. Um, you know, they have just said, keep doing the good job that you're doing. So I really appreciate. I try to do my best to give authentic and real information. If any information is wrong, I request the viewers to correct me in the comment section below. And I will tell uh, people right up front that, you know, I had, uh, you know, I communicated the wrong information. So the purpose of this is not to put Dubai down. It's not to put UAE down. It is only to caution people because many people fall into the trap uh, assuming that Dubai is you know a place or the Middle East is a place where you can make millions of tax-free money it's a very easy life um, people are lured into this dream they take a bank loan they sell off their property and um, they just fall into trouble okay so the purpose of my channel is only to um, you know, educate people so that you don't waste your money. You you take a calculated risk. It's not that Dubai is completely gone to the dogs. You can still get jobs, but you have to be very smart. You have to play the game the way it is supposed to be played. So big thank you to those people who send me donations. They have been sending me every week, three, five, ten. Each and every dollar helps, even though I make money. Otherwise, this money is used to sponsor the channel, uh, to buy a few ads, to make sure that these videos are get, are shown to those people who search about jobs in Dubai and it is to help others. So if you would like to donate to this channel, whether it's $1, $3, $5, $10 every week, anything, even $1 a week, I'm pretty happy with it. I just want to say thank you, especially to a student, a very young man who is based in uh, India. He sent me $3 and he said, this is all I can afford. I got in touch with him and, uh, you know, I'm doing something for him. I really appreciate. However, I want you to keep one thing in mind. There are some people who have the money, but uh, they don't want to spend. Like the guy who wanted a salary of eight to 10,000 US dollars a month. And he said he'll only give me $10 just to ask me a few questions. I'm sorry. That is where I don't accept it. Even though he sent the money, I give it back to him. Um, if you're stingy with your money and you are expecting great service, it doesn't work out that way. However, if you're doing with good intentions, I can understand. So there is a difference between both. It's not that I'm just going to accept any, any and everyone's money, including I had received exactly a hundred dollars where the guy asked me to spoil someone's name. I don't do that. I'm sorry. And I had even got a, you know, I told you in the last video, one guy said he's ready to pay me a big amount of money, but you know, I need to spread rumors about Dubai, UAE. Apparently he had some bad experience. I'm sorry, I, I can't do that. I just can't do that, okay? Because uh, you cannot fool people. You just cannot fool people. And if the channel is growing, if there are many views, it is because I'm being genuine and honest, okay? So let's move on to the news, um, the updates that I've got. This one is pretty shocking. It is Salad, which is supposed to be a company that earns billions. It's a monopoly. The only competitor is due. They earn billions of dollars, billions of dirhams because, you know, the, when you go to Dubai, there is only one carrier that you would uh, want to register with either do or it is Salad. So it is Salad is, you know, it's like the it, it has been there since the beginning of time in UAE. It is Salad has, you know, subcontracts with different other companies that work for Ithi Salad. So instead of taking people directly on Ithi Salad and having to give them the bonuses and the benefits of Ithi Salad, they employ them through other companies, subcontracted companies. And, um, you know, they employ these engineers, especially from India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Philippines, and they do the work. I got a message from a guy who was terminated from Ithi Salad. He told me a total of 800 engineers have been given the pink slip. 
Now, what makes this pretty shocking is, um, okay, on one hand, the Itri Salat has been very generous and kind to give them one month or two months, um, you know, flexibility where they can keep the visa, but after two months, they'll have to cancel it. Now, that's kind of them. Uh, however, on the, on the bad side is, this guy, this guy apparently has a loan that he has taken for, you know, 20 years plus. He has taken for 20 years a loan back in his home country and he is supposed to pay every month. Now he doesn't have a choice. He has a family to feed. He was supposed to get married. Now the marriage is canceled and uh, you know, if he goes back, he's screwed. So he said, I'm desperately looking out for jobs. I'm ready to work even for, you know, 20% uh, less, 30% less. Imagine 800 engineers, qualified engineers with technical capabilities, they will be looking out for jobs. So, and they are ready to work even for 20% less, 30% less. Um, that is really, really sad. And it's really sad because, you know, this is, you know, they have taken loans, they have made so many plans. That is why I keep telling people, please understand that UAE is a temporary phase. It's not a permanent phase. When you come down to UAE, don't start thinking UAE is home. It is not your home. It is a temporary phase. Every year is a new year. Every day is a new day. You do not know if you'll have the job tomorrow or not. Do not take these loans of five years, 10 years. Do not take a, a car loan, bank loan. Just if you're taking a loan just one year, that's the max risk I would suggest anyone. Please do not be stupid. Okay. Uh, now he is in desperate uh, times. He doesn't know what to do. He got in touch with me. He paid me for my service or consultation and I'm guiding him how to actually get a job. Okay. The next one is uh, there are a couple of guys who sent me a message with regards to my video that I had removed uh, network marketing. It seems that these these companies which are I don't want to take their names, but these network marketing companies network marketing means they will call you into, you know, uh, maybe a coffee shop or they'll call you into a house. They'll show you this amazing presentation of all these products that you cannot buy from outside, but you can buy only from the members. You have to put in your own money and you'll get these products which you can sell and make at a profit. And but the actual business is where you you're employed and you need to have two people, one at the left, one at the right. They'll show you these diagrams and they'll tell you. So this guy on the left needs to have another two people. This guy on the right needs to have another two people. And that is how it's a pyramid structure, but they'll tell you it's not a pyramid structure. Okay. Network marketing is a farce. You will never ever succeed. The reason I'm telling you is this guy, these two guys once spend 8,000 dirhams. You know, they say if you put more, you, you get more benefits, you get more perks, you get more products, you get more discount, you get, um, you know, advertised on the website uh, so that you can invite more people. Uh, they don't even have an office and they'll keep showing you Facebook posts that they're having this seminar. They'll have these amazing speakers where they'll tell you, are you tired of the nine to five? Do you want to live the life of your dreams? Do you want to make money when you sleep? Do you want to travel? And, uh, uh, you know, and they'll show you these guys who will tell you that I'm earning $10,000 every month. Oh no, big, big stories, which you cannot validate. They will only make these big, big stories, show you amazing videos. Uh, this guy spent 8,000, another guy spent 20,000 dirhams and now they are making zero. Nobody's picking up their phone calls. Please, please, please. These are desperate times. People will do anything to walk away with money. In the previous video, I told you that uh, there are these guys who come uh, representing uh, as if it's a TV agency. They take your interview. They'll tell you that they'll be putting you on social media, marketing you. They ask you a little bit of money and people think, yes, you know, I'm going to be on television. I'm going to be famous. It doesn't please don't fall for all this and network my see anything that is not uh, part of the uh, you know mainstream that is not mainstream it never works these claims are bullshit it's all bullshit please at least inquire ask someone do some research network marketing never ever works never works all these net just search network marketing companies you'll see enough in most candles the only ones who claim big things are the ones who are just one percent one percent out of millions uh, the majority of people don't make any money. Please don't fall for this. I, you know, they even take you to these big hotels. They show you these big presentations and you know, they have these sales pitches, which are so perfectly placed and people then stand in a line and uh, then they're ready to sign. They don't know half of the people are standing in line. It's just a made up, made up drama uh, where people get fooled when they see everyone standing in line, you know, you know, peer pressure. They also stand in line because they also want, don't want to miss part of the action. Okay. Next one is, uh, UAE exchange, um, a guy who was working there for 20 years, 20 years of his life, he said that he knew the big guys, B.R. Shetty, 
Sudhir Shetty, he knew all the Shettys, even I knew them. Okay, it seems he used to, you know, meet them, hang around with them. He did so many things and so many exhibitions. He has been given the pink, pink slip after 20 years of being with them. It seems many of the top guys with the high salaries have been laid off. Now their focus is to get only people who speak both Arabic and English. That is why they are looking at uh, Eastern kind of crowds. Uh, a gentleman who was running a pharmacy, he told me that uh, he put his life savings into, um, you know, creating this pharmacy. And in order to make money and survive and sustain, he was selling even steroids to bodybuilders. Uh, he was making a little bit of money, but apparently after Life Pharmacy, this group uh, came up. It seems all his customers, everyone now goes to Life Pharmacy and they're finding it very hard to uh, compete anymore. He, he is trying to sell. Nobody is willing to buy his business. He's saying, if I close down, I will be jailed because I have a loan. So he asked me what is to be done. That's another tragedy if you run a business. I'll tell you, you think running a business is easy, but when you have to close down, it's not just closed down. You have so many people to pay. Um, a gentleman who was working for an IT company in a free zone, uh, he shared with me his experience whereby after working for this company, building it from scratch, I don't want to give the name. It's a big multinational company. He built it up from scratch. Uh, he set up systems in place. It seems when he went to the office, um, he found um, he went, he sat down in his office, everything was normal. You know, you take your uh, security badge, you scan it, then you can enter the door. He went, he sat down in the office, everything was normal. Suddenly he got a call from the HR. He said, uh, we would like to just speak to you. He said, okay, fine. He came down there and uh, they, they just plainly told him that, I'm sorry, you have been, uh, you have been laid off uh, due to change in management. And uh, he was told to leave immediately. So he said, I'll just go back to my table and, uh, you know, uh, take my things because they said immediately, not one month, nothing. He went to his table. When he went to his table, two security guards, the guys who he used to talk to, who used to call him, sir, they came there, they stood there and he was like, why are you standing here? He's like instructions of management. I'm sorry, sir, but you know, this is, we have to do our job. They made sure that he quickly took his things and they, they took him out of the office premises closed the door, removed his badge, made him sit outside with his things. And he was like, why are they treating me like as if I'm a criminal? He wasn't even allowed to take the other things. And he was asked to hand over the car keys of the company. He was asked to hand over everything. In fact, he was even asked to vacate the accommodation within a specified period of time. He said he was so embarrassed. He was in a state of shock. And he said, uh, after all these years, giving all my blood, sweat and tears, this is what it is. He was really depressed. He doesn't know what to do. And um, now he cannot go back to India because he'll never get a big position, big salary. Uh, he knows that he doesn't know what to do. Now he has a big question. What does he do? I don't know if he has bank loans, but I do know that his children are studying in school. He can't stop their education. So as far as I know, most of these people, what they tend to do is they tend to buy a visa from the free zone, uh, rack fee zone. They open up a dummy company and they try to survive until it's time for them to move. So I'm sharing with you real life incidents that are actually happening. Uh, it seems TCOM got uh, rid of 20 employees. Now, I do not know much information about this. I just got a one liner. Um, if you're looking in terms of good news, the only good news is makeup artists, DJs and uh, freelancers who uh, organize events, uh, they seem to be making a little bit of money, obviously, because it's Christmas and New Year. So many of them are making money. They send me, uh, you know, a couple of reports saying that, yeah, there are people who have money. Yes, there are people who have money. And if you can make money as a talent, as someone who's unique, like makeup artists and DJs, yes. Only thing I'll caution you is please ensure that you get your money paid ASAP because otherwise you'll have to run pillar to post and they'll never pay you your money. And that's the end of it. So now coming to the questions, I will just answer nine questions that I received. Uh, number one is, Loy, how is it that you help people get jobs so easily? Okay, it's not very easy, but I definitely help them get jobs. Uh, but here's the truth. Here's the truth, which I, you know, because obviously I want to tell you the truth on this channel. Now, most of the people do not know how to make their resumes. They make it really bullshit. It's, it's terrible. They put a photograph as if someone beat them up. They put all these rubbish words that they get from the internet. They just copy paste someone's CV or they go to some bloody agency like monster.com, knockery.com, golftalent.com, golf agency. All these, these are all shitty companies. You'll get a 2000 dirham uh, employee working there who just copy 
copy paste from whatever is given in the computer. He's not an expert. And they'll tell you, oh, it is 85% much better than the market uh, uh, penetration or whatever. Okay. They end up not getting anything and you've already paid the money. Now, what can you do? So what I do is I take these resumes. I find out which company that they want to work for, like the range of companies or which industry. I try to get the contacts there. Now, here's the thing which nobody will tell you in the resumes. I play around with the uh, with the content and yes there is a bit of lying bit of bullshitting all the resumes i'll tell you all the resumes bullshit all the people in interviews bullshit but you know you should know what to bullshit how to bullshit and you know what bullshit you can carry forward if you are uh, you know if you're a dummy i i wouldn't suggest you do this because then you might end up getting into more serious trouble so i guide people through the process and here's the truth which nobody will tell you I help people also lie on their resumes. I help people manipulate the truth and also during interviews because I'll tell you this. If you think everyone tells the truth in the resume and everyone tells the truth in the interview, you are fucking mistaken. Everyone bullshits and lies in their resume and in the interview interview. They'll always say, sir, I'm very hardworking. I'm very focused. I achieved 200% of the profit margin. Uh, you know, uh, I was awarded this. I was awarded that. See, the fact of the matter is, if you're so good, why the fuck are you unemployed? If you're so good, companies should be lining up to give you a job. People like to portray that they are God's gift to that company. It is not that way. So this is a truth which nobody will tell you. I, you know, I play around with the truth. I manipulate the truth. Yes, I do help people lie on their resume and bullshit. But it is bullshit that is believable. It is bullshit that a person can actually prove. It's not like if someone's an introvert, I would say I'm a absolute extrovert. I can talk the socks off anyone. If someone is not good in sales, I'll not say that he's good in sales. I just make sure because I've been dealing with CEOs and decision makers, I know what they are actually looking for. So I play around and I make sure that the resume is attractive enough for them to get called for an interview. And at the interview, I make sure that they ace it. There's a lot of training program that goes back and forth, a lot of calls, a lot of training. So that is why I'm slightly more expensive than the normal average guys. And that is why I'm more successful. So I hope this is clear. I know nobody is going to tell you the truth. Like I told you that, yes, I do, uh, you know, tell lies in the resume. I do make people bullshit during the interviews, but it works. The end result is it works and they get a job and then they prove themselves so that, you know, then it negates the bad effect. Second one, uh, how did I make money without any money when I was, you know, six or seven years ago? Because one of the guys saw my videos, 2011 uh, suicide video of mine. When I was without any money in Dubai, UAE, what I did was I uh, used whomsoever who could help me. I, I took everyone's support and I, you know, cut down my costs to zero. And I would literally go and offer services of value for free. Okay. Where I would offer a training program or I would talk to people or I would entertain them as an MC or DJ or whatever. And uh, when they saw this talent, okay, you don't have to pay any money for talking. Uh, there's no investment because I was doing this from, you know, fr you know, from as far as school days were concerned. So it was inbuilt in me and I built this talent. So I was able to network within the small community of people without making it public. And through references, word of mouth, I kept getting more and more jobs and I kept saving money. And that is how I was able to generate money. And remember this, if you're smart, you'll take your own visa. Uh, you'll keep a relationship. Most of the people are doing that. They take their own visa. Uh, you'll have someone who can sponsor you or can pay you a little bit of money. They were very generous people who did give me money without asking for it back. And then I got influencers who managed to get me gigs or opportunities for me to prove myself where I went out of the way to give them value. And that is how I started to get business. So when people saw, oh, when free offers so much, why not I give them a chance? And that's how I was able to grow and build my brand, make my savings and then get out of UAE. So I hope this answers your question. And yes, you need to take mentoring without mentoring, without having someone to guide you. You can never, ever succeed. Just as you want to learn karate, you can't learn karate by looking in the YouTube in the same way. You know, you want to succeed in business. You need someone to guide you all the way. Okay. Next one. Um, this one is a pretty weird one. One guy sent me a message. Law, I don't need your services at all. I don't need my CV is great. My interview skills are great. Just introduce me to your contacts. I'll do the rest. How much do you charge? Are you fucking crazy? If you are so fucking good in your resume, so great in your communication skills, you would have been able to get an interview easily. How do you think I got it? 
I didn't ask anyone, introduce me to your contacts. No, I went, I broke the ice with people and I managed to get, um, you know, an opportunity. It's all about mastering the art of cold call selling. Okay. You don't tell me that, oh, your resume is so good. I saw his resume. It's crap. Okay. Oh, my interview skills are, when I asked him a couple of questions, he couldn't fucking answer. Okay. Yeah. When I asked him like, why should you be given the job and someone is better than you? Oh, because I'm hardworking. I have 15 years experience and I'm very focused. That's all bullshit, man. So I'm sorry. I don't take money to introduce CEOs, directors, businessmen and people who have been my friends for so many years. I'm not going to start chewing. You know, why the fuck would they even entertain you? What stupid requests I get. Next one is um, the question that I got. Loy, is there any use of registering with recruitment companies? Personally speaking, uh, I had registered with all the recruitment companies in the uh, in the years that I stayed. See, out of the 40 years that I stayed in uh, UAE, there was BBB, BAC, Nadia's, uh, Gulf Talent, Monster. I registered with all the companies. The only call that I got in all the years were only two calls in 40 years. Two calls, uh, you could say, say 20 years of working, two calls that I got and that of the salaries were peanuts. Okay, it's absolutely ridiculous. So if you ask me, re registering with recruitment companies is a waste. Um, you can go ahead and register if they are doing it for free. But if they are charging you money, absolutely don't do it. They are going to con you. They are going to cheat you. There's one fucking website. I don't want to even take its name. It takes money from people to feature them on the main page. What is it? A marriage fucking website? Are you fucking crazy? People are stupid. And now people have even started putting their CVs on LinkedIn. Ah, uh, it is so embarrassing. Please don't do that. You're making a public fool out of yourself. Don't do that. You can't put your CV on a public platform and say, I'm unemployed looking for better opportunities. No, people look down on you. Which successful guy do you say, I'm looking for opportunities? You know, don't do that. It's common sense. Next one, obviously, since I was speaking on LinkedIn, number five is Lloyd, what do you think of LinkedIn, the premium service? It is just another bullshit. Uh, LinkedIn lost its total value uh, ever since people started posting all sort of nonsense. Now LinkedIn has become like Facebook. People post Merry Christmas. You get uh, what? Congratulations for spending nine years. Wish them congrats. Wish them happy birthday. Oh, they are sharing this video. Never give up. Uh, people are, you know, people have all these weird, big, you know, uh, you know, impressive sounding designations. It's total bullshit, man. The number of spam mail that comes through LinkedIn is horrible. I just blocked, blocked people from sending me mails because I couldn't take it anymore. LinkedIn has become a spam website. Uh, decision makers do not actually entertain this. Only if there is a very, very specific job and your profile matches that job and you send uh, to that particular job, maybe there's a chance because I met two CEOs that way because they were asking something in terms of personal branding. Otherwise, it is a waste of time. You can try it out. Don't have to believe me. You see what I mean. Okay. Um, and if you want to impress other people, put some big sounding name, CEO or something, put your billion dollar investment. See how many people send you CVs and beg you for jobs. You don't believe me. Just try it and do it. Uh, number six is Loy, which country to migrate? Um, if you have the money, you can migrate to any country. Uh, people will say Canada, US, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Germany, France. Canada seems to be the most friendly as of now, most easiest. But once you get to Canada, what are you going to do next? So I always tell people at least have 100,000 dirhams per year, have 200,000 for two years and then go there. At least that will save you. Otherwise, you're going to go there and do what? And I also got this question. Law in the Middle East countries, which what do you rate them? If you are talking of only making money and only having money as your criteria, Saudi is best because Saudi pays bigger salaries. But now Saudi is undergoing all this localization. Uh, the second country is obviously Dubai, but Dubai has negated itself with the hype and speculation. So whatever salary you're earning, you'll be spending. Um, then uh, Qatar seems to be coming up the ranks. But then again, I don't have confirmed reports from many people. Qatar says now it's inviting many people. It's making it easy because of the blockade. Kuwait, um, not very favorable because Kuwaitis treat Asians like crap. And uh, finally, Oman, Oman, only if you have good credentials and you can really prove yourself, then go to Oman. Others don't. So these are the countries. Then uh, next thing is, what do I think of the IT sector? I think the IT sector in the Middle East is diluted. It's becoming very tough. 
and uh, they are only looking at cheaper alternatives from uh, third world countries where they can outsource things. That is why people from Philippines, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh uh, who are ready to work for like uh, half the salary or one third the salary, they are taken in because end of the day, it's the same uh, fundamentals. The technicals are the same. So IT sector is uh, they're just looking at cost cutting. My friend was running the business after 15 years. He shut down his computer uh, and laptop, you know, trading. Uh, he used to sell to parts of Africa. He shut it down and has moved back to India. OK, next one. Um, this one girl asked me. It seems the interviewer asked her for an indecent proposal. He gave her an indecent proposal. She didn't give me much details, but as far as I can make out, obviously he has said, you sleep with me, I'll give you the job. Here's the, here's the question. You sleep with him today. What is the guarantee that he'll give you a job or not give you a job? What if tomorrow he goes back on his word? What if he has AIDS? What if he has a sexual disease? What if he blackmails you? What if, um, you know, uh, he asked you the same favor over and over. Don't get into this. Please don't get into this. You start getting into this route. You will destroy your life. I told her just walk away. There are many other opportunities. Just believe in yourself. You will, you know, you will get something. Uh, you know, the, 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 don't do this. Please don't do this. I request you. Okay. Last, if not the least, I got a, a question with a link on Gulf News. What do you think of the shopping festival and the sale? If you have tons of money to burn, go ahead and spend your money. But if you're smart, do not spend it. Keep your money because cash in hand is power. Why do you think these companies are giving a sale? Are they stupid? Are they crazy? If I was making money, why the fuck should I give anything for a discount? It is because I'm not making money. Please don't spend your money. When will you learn? Don't spend money and especially do not spend on the credit card. Do not take anything on credit. Do not, uh, you know, borrow. If you have money, First is savings. After that, whatever extra, buy the bare minimum. Please do not go for these sales. These sales are designed by very smart people to make sure that you blow your money you spend. That's how supermarkets are designed, where they have chocolates right at the end. When you stand there, children look, they want to buy. You know, it's, it's done by very smart people. These sales are nothing but for them to take out your money and give you stuff that you do not need. They're getting rid of the old stock. Nothing new will be given on a sale. And if they do offer you on sale, it is because they know that the coming next few weeks are going to be very bad. Please don't waste your money. That's my request to you. As usual, I always tell you, you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't like it, thumbs down. Put your comments down below. And yes, if you'd like to contribute to the channel to support me, $1, $5, $10, anything, every week, a little bit, I'm happy because it cut down, uh, it, it cut down, cuts down cost. And uh, please send me your questions. I will try to merge them. And with regards to facts, send me the correct information. If it is worth sharing, I will definitely share with all the viewers. Thank you very much once again. This is Loy Macedo signing off for now. Take care.